What comes to mind when I mention the following famous people? George Washington. Do you think of the first president of the United States? The father of this great nation? The man with the wooden teeth? How about Thomas Jefferson? The third president of the United States? One of our greatest founding fathers? The author of the Declaration of Independence? And how about Abraham Lincoln? The 16th president of the United States? The commander in chief during the Great Civil War? The first president to be assassinated? Because of our theme this year, you might be thinking, this is, a, this is the part of my lesson where I'm going to mention the Washington Monument, the Jefferson Memorial, or the Lincoln Memorial. But these creations are not the only one given to remind us of these great men. Have you considered the memorial to these men you might just be carrying with you at this very moment in your pocket or purses? If you look closely at the $1 bill, you will see the face of George Washington. The $2 bill bears the image of Thomas Jefferson, and the $5 bill shows that of Abraham Lincoln. Canvas, stone, and metal have all been used to honor greatness. But these three men have been immortalized on, well, paper. Think about it. The very money we hold in our hands and use on a daily basis remind us of how important they were and are to our great nation. Yet nearly 2,000 years ago, there were one whose accomplishment surpasses them all. He was greater than all those who come before him and all those who came after him. That man was Jesus, the Son of Man and the Son of God, at the very same time. Like our president, pictures have been painted, statues have been shipped, monuments have been erected to remind us of the life of Christ. But no memorial to him have ever been more significant than the one given to us by him, the Lord's Supper. When Paul wrote his first letter to the Church of Corinth, he reminded them of the Lord's Supper instituted by the Lord just hours before his crucifixion. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 25 reads, For I received from, from the Lord that which I have also delivered to you, that Lord Jesus on the same night which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which I have given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The Lord's Supper is not designed to impress our eyes, nor appear to other senses. It is not made of smooth marble, nor does it tower hundreds of feet above our heads. In fact, it is made of crackers and grape juice, two emblems, simple in form and substance, but internally powerful in memories and meaning. The unleavened bread represents Jesus' body nailed to the cross, and the fruit of the vine represents Jesus' blood that flowed from his head, feet, hands, and his side, they call to our remembrance the greatest sacrifice ever made, born out of divine love for each one of us here today. Greater far than one is in any man-made sculpture is the opportunity for every child of God has to participate in this God-given feast, specifically designed to help us better remember and never forget the body and blood of the Lord shed on the cruel cross of Calvary for our eternal salvation. It is given so that we might fulfill his wishes. Do this in remembrance of me.